Ryan. What's up? How's, How it, going? How's it going? It's great. How are so, you? Uh, so we uh, we've been as you can see when you were uh, collaborating, we've been we've been changing our whole. But we got like 150 collaborations this week. Oh wow! Yeah. So what we're we're doing is we're starting to schedule posts now so that we have them scheduled out. We ha that's where we're at that stage, which is good because it allows yeah. us to get off the hamster wheel. Yeah, um, for sure. But but uh uh but anyways, I am super excited about today because I am like I'm feeling it. I'm feeling drained today. Mm. The zero day de degrees get me, and and when we do this, I always wake up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know you just need a little bit of time to set set back. It doesn't take much, you know. Um, that's perfect for today. What we kind of what I got going. So just, um, uh, I'm going to do like, we're going to start with like a, just a, um, a little test and then we're going to do a quick state scan and then we're going to go into, um, a cool breath practice that is more individualized to the person. So everybody will do this test together and they'll get their, their, um, basically the number they're going to use and then they'll apply it to the breath and they can do this. Like, this is a good practice to regularly do. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Basically, what we're doing is we're doing hypoventilation or breathing less than normal. So again, sitting? It's, um, yeah, sitting is good. Yep, you, you don't have to, I, I, I prefer. I could use sitting today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do sitting, sitting over over lying down too. I think it'd be better. Oh, lying down. Get a good I can no, do no, down. no, sitting, sitting okay. over lying down. I prefer. Okay. I prefer a seated position for this. Yeah. <clears throat> So it's CO2 Tuesdays and we're working on CO2 exposure. So we're gonna test that and then we're gonna apply it. Hypoventilation is basically the, we're under breathing a little bit. So um, when we under breathe, we expose ourselves to CO2, but we also train ourselves to be able to breathe in a more calm, quiet position throughout the day by doing this kind of stuff. So um, you are you feeling good and ready to go? I am. I I am so ready. I got up yeah, this yeah. morning going, thank God it's Tuesday because <laughs> I, I dragged my ass out to the morning wake up. I dragged my ass out to doing fashion maneuvers. Got a bit of energy after I did that and I'm like just feeling the zero degree. So zero degrees, yeah. for me, I feel it in my body. Yeah, I feel, I feel that today too. I feel it. it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit, it was a little bit tough to get up and get going, get after things, but yeah, um, and, you know, this, this, kind of... this is why the astrology, because I used to go like, why am I like this? What did I do? What didn't I do? And I'd guess, mm -hmm. but it's a zero degree day. And every zero degree day, I just feel like uh, Jason, I got off the live uh, this morning and he, and I, how'd it go? And he goes, man, I didn't want to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Never mind do the live. Yeah, I felt that today. So I'm, I'm with you. I'm feeling it. Okay. Um, okay. So let <clears throat> uh, me get my timer. Probably just using a watch here. We're gonna do a simple test. We're gonna get our arresting, our arresting uh, breath rate, our RBR. And arresting, uh, arresting breath rate is interesting because we're consciously being aware of our breath. Um, so we're trying not to, we're trying not to manipulate it. So you're just trying to breathe and count your breaths. Uh, and a breath is a full cycle. It's an inhale and an exhale. So it's both, that's a one breath, um, if you didn't know. But, uh, but, um, Try not to influence it when we do this um, and try to just observe the breath. Totally come back from it and just breathe how you are breathing right now. Like without you, observe. it's going to almost be impossible, but as best you can. And we're just going to count the breaths for 60 seconds and you'll get a number. Okay. Okay. All right. So I want you to start by just um, getting comfortable in a position, a normal position, no control, and close your eyes so that you can kind of look inward and just observe the breath now. We're not counting it. I just want you to observe your breath and notice that if it if you already took over control a little bit to kind of relax back and just to breathe normal. And just observe what, what it's doing. And now begin counting now. Don't even try to re relax. Don't try to do anything. Just observe. And the, the, the mere like practice of observation will change your state a little bit. Just observing the breath is what I always recommend is the first breath practice. For 20 seconds in, just keep counting. And try to step back even further from the body. You're just totally observing, like you're outside of your body looking down, little control is possible.
10 seconds. And stop. Take your number right there. That's three and okay. Half. Three and a half reps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was a very low count. Okay. That's. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, it's like I, honestly, you're, since you're I've been opening up the fascia, there's less restriction. I breathe less. My normal breath rate right now is, is if I'm up and moving, is about six. Okay. Okay. Well, that's perfect. Six is like perfect. So yeah, if anybody th throw your numbers in there. Um, no judgment. It's just a little bit of a little bit of uh, honesty. Hey, listen, mine. If I was doing this years ago, I was like, I was like seven to nine. No, seven to nine. Years well, ago. we got one. We got David Garcia put one. So that's a that's a pretty hey, good. So Dave, hey, yeah, that's it. Just one, just two, yeah. He's a twenty-nine degree. He's a grandmaster, just like you. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the Grandmaster so Libra. It's all about he, the lungs, too. He's, he's basically Gandhi. You know, he's just he's in he's in Nirvana right now. He's he's kind of not even on Earth, so it's that's all right. Um, yeah, so we're getting numbers, everything from from eight to twenty four, um, and I just want to talk about it before we get into this practice. So we are like we're chronic overbreathers as society, and we've we've put the norm out there. We've talked about this plenty of times, but the norm now is what we what we call normal range is twelve to twenty. Uh, but in, t in technical terms, that's all that's dysfunctional breath and that's over breathing. We want to be below 12 ideally. Uh, and it's not like it don't don't feel like, you know, it's the end of the world. If you're at 25 or whatever, it's just a good time to start implementing this kind of practices. You know, I have a really. I have a chart I'm going to send over you because we clinically verified behavior sets and levels of testosterone mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. levels of stress hormones. And we could tell, like, if, if somebody was between uh, 19 and over, they had chronic conditions. Mm. If, they were between, uh, if they were between 17 and 20, and we listed it down by, and we could tell the type of uh, body conditions that they had based on it. I'll send you over the, yeah. the presentation. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah, definitely. I would love to, love to look at that. Because um, it's, it's just... Uh, you know, like we've talked a bit many times about it before, but how things are based on norms and norms are not what is thriving and norms are not getting us where we want to be in terms of our health. So, um, the ideal rate is six breaths a minute, uh, around six to eight breaths a minute is really, really just an ideal, um, uh, rate. So this practice is a way to start to enhance that is you take your normal breath rate and you cut it in half. So, um, so David Garcia is going to be breathing one half breath per minute, but, um, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of the rate you want to get at. So, um, if you look, we're going to do 60 seconds and you're going to take, so say you had 10, you're going to do five breaths. Okay. So we're going to do a little math real quick. So I'll let you guys kind of figure out kind of roughly how many breaths you want to breathe within the next 60 seconds. And I want to practice it and I want you to breathe nice and calm. Um, and I want it to be quiet and low volume. So let's say you're 10. You have 60 seconds and divide 60 by five and that's how many, you know, that's how many seconds per breath. So then you get one breath. Um, so let me just do a sample here. Um, so if you had, hold on a second. So if you had a 10 second breath, uh, uh or you had 10 breaths, you're doing, uh, you're doing six per minute about, you know, or every six seconds you're doing a breath. So, um, you want to divide that in half then every uh every three seconds you should have a full breath cycle okay so it's a little bit of math involved we're gonna, um we're gonna go up we're gonna breathe a little bit more is what you're saying less oh, half less. your breath rate yeah you so <laughs> you're gonna try you're gonna try to get let's just do two breaths in a minute yeah, so it's gonna be a really hard two, two breaths is a normal like sitting resting concentrating on uh, like like a relaxing breathing for me yeah uh well yeah so two breaths in one minute right yeah yeah okay. and that's a like if i'm laying down yeah and i'm doing and I'm just, and someone's got a thing on me, I'll breathe about two to two and a half times. Okay. Minute. All right. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's definitely, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a low breath rate. So, um, we want to, that's like 30 seconds in 30 seconds yeah. out. Okay. So we're going to go through a couple of cycles here. You, again, this, this practice that we're going to do is we're going to kind of do broad spectrum, but if you're at home and you just got 20, 20 breaths, then you're going to take and do 10 breaths per minute. And you're going to do that for a minute. You're gonna come back to rest. You're gonna do it another minute. Come back to rest, and you can do five to ten rounds of this. So, um, yeah, let me explain it again because I know the math. The math part gets kind of weird, and this isn't what we're we're gonna kind of go over it all today. Um, but one more time. So, 
uh, we, we, we did a minute breath and we got your resting breath rate. Your resting breath rate was 20. For the breath practice, you're going to use half that, which is 10. And that's 10 breaths per minute. So you'll have to calculate like how many seconds per breath it is. So say it was, you know, six seconds uh, per breath. That's yeah, three 60 seconds. divided by 10, mm -hmm. and then you get six seconds per breath. Or yep. 60 divided by three, and then you get, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then basically that's, that's three seconds per inhale or exhale. So inhale three, exhale three, okay? So it's... It's, um, that's something you can kind of just take with yourself, like with your, this is a good practice to kind of get into. So what we're going to do today is volumes breathing. Where we're going to start at a higher breath rate and we're going to work ourselves down to, um, to a small, like a short, we kind of did similar to this way in the beginning of CO2 yeah. days, but I love it. And it's a great one to kind of bring back in. Okay. okay. So we're going to start. Um, the breath is going to go two seconds in, two seconds out. Okay. So that's going to come out to, uh, I don't even know what the math is on that, but that's what we're going to start with. And I'll guide through everything, uh, and then we'll do four, and then we'll do eight, and, okay? So let's just sit back, listen to me talk, and I'll guide you through it. I know it sounds confusing, and I'll write it out later so that everybody can kind of have it to take home, okay? So the first breath is in through the nose, out through the mouth. This is how we're going to breathe today. So it's going to go two in. So one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. And then when I change it, it's going to go... Uh, four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So, and then we'll keep we'll keep doubling it from there. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. So you can close your eyes. You can, you can get comfortable. You can lay down if you want for this practice. But I just want you to start off with a state scan. So what we're going to do is just close the eyes and not control the breath again. I just want you to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose for this first part. Let your body get into sync with what we're about to do. Uh, and I want you to observe your current state. In terms of state, I mean, how does your nervous system feel? How does your emotional body feel? How does your physical body feel? Tap into first your thoughts. What thoughts are currently crossing your mind? And this is no judgment. You think whatever you want. You are just observing them pass by. You're looking at them they're there, you're fine with it because you are separate from them right now. And then I want you to tap into your sensations, how your body feels. Maybe you're feeling comfortable, maybe you're feeling irritated or there's an itch or it's hot or it's cold or it's perfect temperature. What are you feeling physically right now? And then on your nervous system, how does that feel? What do you feel in terms of comfort, fear, discomfort? Is there static? Sometimes a, a word do you feel heavy, light, tense. Start to kind of coin and understand what you feel in your state right now. And then we're all going to go together in through the nose, all the way up to the top. Take a deep breath into the belly, into the lower back, expansive and wide. And hold for a second before we release. When we release, it'll be a one, two, and then we begin. And three, two, one, out through the mouth. One, two, in, two, out, two, in, two, out, two, in, two, out, two, in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Keep this rhythm going. This is the standard that most people breathe in. And it, for some, this feels like you're hyperventilating. It's because you are. Keep this rhythm up so you understand it a little bit. We're gonna go a few more here. And now we're gonna go big breath in for, th for four, three, two, one. Out, three, two, one. In, three, two, one. Out, three, two, one. In, out. Keep this rhythm going. Expanding. Contracting. Keep that breath going. For some, this might start getting difficult. This might be a little bit of, of hypoventilation. It might be a little less breathing. 
And now big breath in for six, five, four, three, two, one, out. Five, four, three, two, one, in. Five, four, three, two, one, out. Five, four, three, two, one. Continue that pattern. We're slowing the breath down a little bit now. Length thinning both ends of it. get a little dizzy okay go just try to yep into the nose and if you get dizzy start to just go all through the nose keep that rhythm going super forced to breathe like this yeah. like thinning now we're gonna bring it in for the next one. We're starting to get a little bit tougher. We're gonna go eight seconds in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, 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 out, seven, six, five, four, three, two. In seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. one. Keep this going, flowing. Really allow it. Feeling better. Feeling better. Yep, you're getting more, more to the normal breath rate, close to yours. Good. Keep, keep these going. The dizziness should. Start to subside with these longer breaths. Now we're allowing CO2 to start building a little bit. We're not just getting rid of it all. And just keep this rhythm going for a few more. We're going to lengthen it one more time. Or two more times. Sorry about that. And now, now we're going to bring it in for 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, out. 9, 8, 7. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep, keep that rhythm. Ow. I really like that breath. Ten second breaths right now. Twenty second breaths technically. So now we're at where Gary was sitting at a three breath a minute. And each one of these breaths should be at the very peak of what your lungs natural capacity is not pushing not going beyond then last one we're going to go to 14 seconds we're going to go up a little bit more and in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, out, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, in, 13. Five, four, three, two, out. Start to feel your body start to come down, relaxing a little bit. One more cycle here. In. Out. Slowly controlling. Pulling in your pelvic block and kind of activating as you exhale, pushing all that air out. Fully exhale now, it's our last breath. I want you to push it all out. Keep going. Push, pull the belly in, push more air out, and then hold right here, flexed. Stay right with it. And now big breath in. And then relax, exhale. Now keep the eyes closed. I want you to tap into your state again. And I want you to start comparing the starting you to the current you in terms of your state.
terms of your breath rate, in terms of your sensations, your emotional body, your thoughts. Just self-scan here. Continue to the normal breath and see what the difference was. Will you compare now to what you started with in just that simple five minute breath? What do you think, Gary? I'm definitely um, <clears throat> closer to two. Two feels comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so you just like normal, you just like, that's just where you feel. Yeah, yeah I felt um, when we came past three, I wanted to go longer and I felt myself cutting myself mm -hmm. off to. Mm -hmm. or yeah. Yeah, so that's like a, f what is that? That's two breaths a minute. Two breaths yeah. a minute. Yeah. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. 30 minutes. second breath. <clears throat> yeah, like when I was, um, but this has all changed for me because in the last year, a year ago, I was doing this and two to three breaths per minute was laying flat, calm down, holding, actually forcing the hold a little bit until I got there, you know, waiting for my diaphragm to kick a little bit and then breathe. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm not even getting a diaphragm kick. I want to, I want to go further. Like my, now I want to go into breathing less. Yeah. But that's, yeah. Again, that's changed for me. And this last uh, three to four months has had the biggest change in my respiration yeah. rate. I, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's, uh, that is the goal, you know, right? Just to get into that state. It's, it's, um, it's, it's easy to let go of. But um, another tool I kind of use for people that are, that are hyperventilators or that have anxiety and that kind of stuff is you've seen it, like, I, I just did a post about it, but you've seen, like, the old movies where they breathe into a bag is keeping your own breath rate where you are a hyperventilator. If you're like over 18 breaths per minute, um, I would say even over 12, keeping your own breath rate. And then you can use a bag or you can actually use your shirt with your hands yeah. and breathe. And you'll breathe your own CO2 back in, which will incite kind of that, those all those alarms will be popping off. Um, so it's going to be like, you need to breathe, you know, you're, but you're, you're, you're putting CO2 back in the body. So, that's so then when you take... Well, so here's the bigger question. Yeah. Do we have a CO2 problem in the planet? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're practicing for it. Yeah, you know? it's, it's CO2 makes, uh, you know, I was talking about this the other day because uh, you go to these big commercial greenhouses and they have CO, they, it's the size of jet engines, CO2 uh, machines. Yeah. I, I mean, it, there's there's some there's some debate on whether or not that it's something that is not a natural cycle. That's or... because they're all trained in modern science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's, uh, I, you know, it's, it, it's definitely a, we a weaponized topic. It's a weaponized topic for sure. Yeah. You know, because like, I tell people all the time, oxygen is the package. CO2 mm -hmm. is the label that tells that package where to go. Because yeah. when somebody dies of asphyxia, they can have blood oxygen saturation of like 85, 90%. Mm -hmm. And they still die of asphyxia because the oxygen is still in the blood, yep. but it doesn't go to the tissue. Exactly. CO2 is what tells it where to yep. go. Yeah. And the higher it to break CO2. Off environment we actually have we have we're calmer and and the other thing too is carbon dioxide if you go back 100 years ago was used as anesthesia for surgery yeah yep no i know it's uh it's it's uh just it's been a while that's been you know termed a, a waste product or a toxic uh molecule but it's a, it's such an essential piece that we are constantly getting rid of now so um, to switch that back and take back your own power with your breath yeah. is is it's a, it's it is the next thing that we need to be able to do. Um, but yeah, that that practice itself again, it sounded kind of complicated. I'm sorry, I know it's math is complicated. And I, I'm not yeah, but you know, even without the math, the idea yeah. is you go to a two breath, you move it to a four. Yeah, find what's a little, little uncomfortable, but you want to find something that's a little bit uncomfortable uh, that you have that little bit of discomfort from the breath. Um, and sometimes I call it like, um, like pretend, well not call it, but I say like pretend that there's a bear standing over you, you're trying to pretend you're dead and not show that you're breathing at all. And just like breathe as minimal volume as possible. But well, um, the stress is firing and you're like, you're trying not to breathe and the bear is about to like eat you for lunch. And yep. 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 Exactly. That's it. You're just exactly what you're trying to do. By the way, uh, did, you, did you watch the movie, The Reverence? I haven't seen it yet. No. Okay. That's the worst bear attacking a human scene I've ever seen in my life. It is so visceral. He knew the breath work, though. It, if you're scared right. of animals, you never ever want to watch that. No, I know. Have you ever seen Grizzly Man? No. 
it's a true story. It's a documentary, and uh, they don't show it, but at the end, the guy and his wife, I think, but I think they both get eaten alive by the bears and it's on video. What a uh, way to go. Ugh, yeah, it, miserable. Worst that. You know, you know, he couldn't bear it. <laughs> you always, always, always get the dad jokes kicking pretty, pretty. <laughs> So, so this is the, so basically somebody who has anxiety, mm -hmm. this, this is a good practice to drive it up and then drive it down because what you're doing is you're, you're educating your body. This is what it feels like. Like when we were up at two breaths in, two out, I, I'm like, I'm like, I could feel my body getting tense and tightening up. And that's, if you're breathing like that, that's your natural state. And so you're yeah. actually giving the body a reference range, which it, if you're, if you're breathing that much, you don't know what's going on in your body. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's well, it's it's also every time you get any kind of exposure to a change in the body that way, then it's like you know you're 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 just not able to respond to the stress, and it's just like this quick, and you're always in that state, and so you are always trying to get rid of it. You're always hyperventilating. It's just this double-edged sword, and you're kind of stuck in that cycle. Are we uh, uh, are we talking now to people? Sure. Oh yeah. Love talking to people. So if uh, somebody has a really good question, bare, bare feet. <laughs> Scott, bare feet. <clears throat> yes. Uh, somebody has a good question because um, I don't want to go into the feed. Put it in the comments. And if you want to come live and we'll, we'll, we'll answer your question. It was like a law of rhythm in breathing exercises. So, uh, yeah, yeah, actually, that's what it was, really. Um, I feel like more. See, so yeah, I feel like. Let's see, uh, here she said, I feel like most of the time I almost naturally forced to slow my breathing down. It's like a habit now. So yeah, that's really important because you do build a, a habit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, that's the whole point is that we, we, it's, we practice this stuff, then it becomes, it becomes how it should have been. It, you know, it becomes natural. And then, um, we do it in our sleep literally. And then we, like we were talking last week, you know, with the mouth tape and stuff like that, you don't need to rely on those things anymore because you build the, the the muscle memory and, and the ability to just do it subconsciously. Right, right, absolutely. You know something? It's really weird. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm I didn't want to. Like, I have a list of people. I'm trying to bring up people from the comments. It's not letting me. I have a list of people, but I don't want them to come up and start asking questions about their eczema. Mm. I was diagnosed with uh, COPD. So, what do you say when somebody's diagnosed COPD? Uh, um, I've I've worked with a couple people with, with COPD. Um, <laughs> And I mean, general breath, breath practices are, are, are going to be really good, but I think they're going to be really res like, uh, I would say responsive in a way that they're going to feel it a lot more when they do this, the, the, the minimalist breathing, um, it'll be really helpful to them, but it's going to be, it'll be kind of a, a short step to get there because it's, they're very, very responsive. Okay. Um, since you're a breathing expert and you do fashion maneuvers, and actually, we have we have a course coming up with you soon, which is a whole breathwork workshop. It's mm -hmm. four parts, right? Yeah. And and uh, and that way you're going to be taking breathwork and mindset. So that program is going to be available. Um, we're going to be marketing it sometime shortly. I think. Yeah, we have to figure that out again. We have to talk about that. I think uh, after this, like what the yeah, we'll we'll yeah, but it's coming yeah, up. It's yeah. coming up, and and so you're going to be teaching people mindset and breath work and how to integrate it but somebody asks about do you practice these breathing maneuver uh in the maneuvers or just on your own um you're asking me if i if i or do we just well we, they're they're asking generally uh -oh. should i practice these yeah i mean that's what i that's what that's what got me into fashion maneuvers it started like i started doing it with, with the breath and it's just like they're they're built for each other you know it's just they make both of them make each other that much more enhanced. Yeah, we so yes, 100%. we say people because what we're doing is we're restricting the body, mm -hmm. and then breath becomes the internal pressure. Mm -hmm. So breath becomes literally the therapist. Yeah. Yep. So, um, is it normal to cause me to yawn? Yeah, that's skin care by. I mean, so typically that's a good sign. Typically that's like a sign that your nervous system is maybe down regulating. Um, you're starting to go into more parasympathetic mm -hmm. state, especially if you were like. I mean, it can mean a couple things, uh, but. But that's usually what, what the, because a lot of people do yawn when they start a breath practice, they go into it and they're like, why am I yawning so much? It's usually because you're coming back to a baseline. Okay, so I breathe through my mouth and my nose at the same time. And sometimes I pause and exhale and feel I exhale through my whole body. Is that normal? Uh, 
I'm trying to trying to put that together. Imagine what that is. Um, but David Garcia is you know one breath a minute. So we uh, we're trying to. So I breathe through my nose, and at the same time, pause my exhale. I feel the exhale through my whole body. Um, I, I I don't, don't know. I, I can't. I, I'm not sure that you can technically breathe through your nose and the mouth at the same time. I think it might be that it's going back and forth, and you're just not aware of. Yeah, it. isn't that true? It's. Um, I mean, you can kind of pull. It's just like you gotta like kind of. It's a little bit. Uh, I think. I, yeah. I, I think. I think they might be. I think their their system might going back and forth, and them not recognizing. Cause I don't think. I don't think it's biologically. I don't think we can do it. I'm not sure. And 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 I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. So like. That's something I'd have to look at again. Yeah, it, I, it I doesn't. Can't. It doesn't. Yeah, it does. I don't feel it personally, but but uh, you know, it's, but yeah, one breath of minute though. When Dave I Garcia. breathe through my nose, I feel it, and I, I it. I see breathing completely different than the rest of the world. I see that the uh, breath into the lungs is a start. That's like when I get in a bath. I like how could I go weeks without water when I'm fasting? Is because when I get in a bath, my body absorbs the water right away. That's just because my fascial layers are open and loose and you've touched my body before. It's like weird mm. in a good way. Mm. And, and, but I also see that breathing is that way. I have people hold my arm and when I breathe, my body goes like this. Mm. So I believe, yeah. I, I believe if, if water can get through, we're in water and it's just a different level of water. And when our body's accustomed, I believe that we can breathe naturally through our skin. Yeah. Our skin does I mean, breathe there's... technically. It's just that we're, and the and what it is, it's oxygen getting into the layers. So technically, why wouldn't we be able to breathe from a technical point of view? Okay, let's try with balancing lotus. <clears throat> balancing lotus. I breathe through my. Let's see what else is up here. Let's see here. Um, you can also do contractions and release through breath work. Noticing longer exhales, it's easier. The same. Uh, Noticing longer exhales easier than same time of inhale. Is that normal to be able to exhale longer or inhale longer? It's easier to control your exhale, um, mainly because if you think about it, it takes it takes energy and expansion to pull air in. But when you release it, you're using the elasticity of like of your muscles and your and your fascia to kind of allow those lungs to collapse. So you can control that a little bit better. So I think that's what the kind of the, the answer to that question would be. So the other one was, uh, is diaphragmatic breathing the only way to correctly breathe? Yeah, if you didn't, if you don't breathe, you're like, you cannot breathe through your diaphragm, otherwise you'd be an iron lung. So you have to breathe with your diaphragm. Now, when we talk about diaphragmatic breathing in terms of like, you should diaph you should breathe into your diaphragm, it just means not chest breathing predominantly. But because when you chest breathe, you still- stuck, And I, I literally pull the ribcage, if I grab your, your skin and pull it mm. up, pull your ribcage up, the lungs will fill up naturally in a vacuum because it, it's 2,000 pounds of pressure, mm -hmm. internal and external. And so like if I was to take and expand your lungs and you didn't, and if I sold your, your nose shut and sold your lips shut and I went like this and expanded your lungs, your face would go it would inward collapse because <laughs> it's 2,000 pounds of pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, uh, so you, you have to use the mm -hmm. diaphragm, but if your diaphragm's not working, then people will breathe with their their shoulders and chest, and the the lung is shaped like a pear, and so twenty five percent of the top of the lung is that shoulder and chest breathing, which is meant for reserve breathing, like at the end of the breath cycle, like when mm -hmm. you're running or something like that. Mm -hmm. But because we sit in chairs, we we uh, restrict our diaphragm and we start breathing here naturally because it's easier. The body's just going to go to where it's easier. Yeah, yeah, posture and. And yeah, forward head posture around that. Like, it's harder to get access to the lungs. That's why I practice a lot of uh, air packing and the stuff that you do, like your stage breath, that kind of stuff, which helps expand that area as well. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, David uh, Garcia, I breathe through my mouth and my nose at the same time. Sometimes I pause and exhale. Okay. David, I, think, I think you were, yeah, you were at the one breath per minute. So I'm super. Now, now I want to study you. <laughs> yeah. Now, now my science mind comes out and I want to, I want to watch you and get to know you yeah. better. <clears throat> but like, like day to day, I, I would like to know, I think maybe David is a little bit more conscious of his breath and was, yeah. was, yeah. I mean, it, like, I would like to know what is, what is true, like what is true unconscious breathing rate would be, it would be interesting to find yeah, out. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And, and, and that's the other thing too is, is 
if you're just measuring somebody, if they're just laying around and you're watching them and then you measure them, it's a lot different than if you're telling you're being measured. Like if I put exactly. a, a camera on you, you act differently than if you don't know one's on you. 100%, yeah. That's what they, yeah, hey, Gary's are about is, um, is they, they actually catch me live. If, mm -hmm. if they, they say, hey, let's do hey, Gary, it doesn't work. They have to catch me live because I'm a generator. And so I respond to a request. And if you give me a request, I'll just respond naturally, authentically. Mm -hmm. and, yep. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why measurement is tough. So if someone says, question, opinion on the emotional response to hold your breath. When I was uh, birthing my babies, naturally experiencing all the pain, my natural reaction was to hold too yeah. much. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is, that is a, but that's more of a, like a, a nervous system response to pain or discomfort or is to hold our breath <clears throat> or stress. We hold our breaths when it's not, when it's unconscious or when it's not, when it's that sense that is, that's not ideal for what we're looking for. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a coping mechanism, but it's not like when we practice it consciously, it changes kind of what the body, how the body responds, the nervous system responds. Somebody was talking about Batego breathing. Yeah, Batego was the one that helped us understand the bore effect, mm -hmm. but we, we built a, a calculator to manage stress on Batego's formula. And we had a, a double PhD in math and physics from Arizona State he kept, we kept running the numbers and it was wrong. And we found a, we found an error in his formula and we corrected it. Mm. Um, and that was actually in 2011 with the Rubenstein center. That was Dr. David Rubenstein, the PhD. Yeah, he told me, he told me about that. I'd like to see that too. If he's, if he had that somewhere. Yeah, there. I think, you know, I think Dan who does our, you've met Dan, right? Have you? He does our marketing. I don't think so. Yeah. So Dan is the one that has the formula. I'll see if I can dig that out because what we found was the formula, Botego breathing work. And then, we were using it to, uh, we were using it against a stress cortisol, uh, adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol index. And then it started failing, like it worked and worked and worked. And then the numbers went squirrely and we, we couldn't figure it out. And we gave it to this uh, double PhD and he goes, oh, you got the formula wrong. And he corrected it, like literally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thoughts on uh, Scott uh, Verado. Thoughts on letting go of bre uh, breath, equalizing internal and external pressure and allow the ambient resistance around you percuss the breath in and out like we're a drum. Uh, I, I, I don't really understand, but I think, I don't I think know. he's saying, I think he's saying like, we've got 2000 pounds of pressure on us. Yep. We have a reciprocal 2000 pounds of pressure. So if we're using inhale and exhale, can we let it vibrate like a drum? Like will the body vibrate? I think is what he's saying. Um, so, I mean, I, I've always called I've always called the breath like kind of our, our natural instrument. I mean, it is kind of it is rhythmic. It's it's built into us to be that way. But it's it's kind of a it's a contract, relax. It's a response that you know. Like I said, we inhale, we pull the air down by the contracting our 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 diaphragm, and then we allow that natural elasticity just to bounce it back to neutral and relax. So um I, i'm not sure exactly what the how to answer that but that's i've always referred to it that way so uh so somebody said i felt my pressure build in the back of my head where we were hyperventilating mm -hmm. it didn't release with long breaths is that have you heard of that before yeah i mean it yeah yeah, so it, that the stuff will contract in different areas during some kind of like when you're breathing. So we're, what, what's happening is we're getting rid of CO2, which is a vasodilator. So we are basically constricting our blood vessels are, are constricting. And so you'll start to feel pain in different areas. Uh, sometimes it's um, areas where you had an injury before. And there are some anecdotal ideas on injury repair with um, hyperventilation techniques and and um, and CO2 and breath holds combined into that. And there's so that could be what's happening. I don't know if you have any neck pain or neck injuries or anything like that existing. You know, um, uh, so <clears throat> I don't know if people know this, but when you breathe into your mouth, when you breathe into your nose, breathing into the nose is easier because there's a nodule at the top of the nose that when the uh, air volume runs through it automatically, it sends nitric oxide and vasodilate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. So that's for like forty percent more nasal breathing to mouth breathing. You're getting na uh, like nitric oxide. Yeah, is. it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's an actual physical nodule that the air runs through and then tells the body to vasodilate right away. Mm -hmm. I learned it from Doctor Rubenstein. He showed me that. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So here's one. Arda. He's. Uh, I think you may have met him. He's our lifestyle artist. He he runs our shipments out of California. Can you talk about oral posture when we are breathing? Tongue position, jaw, etc. Yeah. Um, 
I actually did a post that we did it last week or yeah, last week we did a little bit on, on this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, typically you want, um, let me actually look at the question one more time. So asking about where your tongue should be during breathing. I, I didn't see it actually. Well, I think, but, he's, uh, I think he's talking just about generalized oral posture. Yeah, is okay. that it, like if we're doing the work, that would it, I think what he's saying is there is there a place that would be beneficial to put yeah. our tongue, like roof of yeah. the mouth, front of the mouth, stuff like that? Yeah, suctioned almost to the top of the top of the mouth, not pushed forward. We don't push on our teeth. That creates other issues. Um, you want you want tongue behind the mouth, ideally, and as much as you can, like that. Like, like that should be your pot, your resting posture. Like check throughout the day. Like just lift your mouth and see if your tongue is on the on the top. Should be shouldn't be resting down. That's poor tongue posture, and that can cause other issues and you know weakness throughout through, <clears throat> with breathing. Um, so that's the focus. That's the resting position. Somebody said we can exhale through our mouth and nose at the same time. Again, I'd have to try that. <laughs> I've never actually tried. It, so I've yeah. never looked into it. Hey, these, they, I mean, they, they, guys, like yeah. there are so many things about the human body that I learn every day. I am. I am not saying I am an expert anywhere. I am a Excellent. constant student. Exhale, probably. Inhale, I, I don't think it's as, I mean, I'm sure the little bit, but it's, I mean, they're both open when you are inhaling through the mouth, so, but. Okay. Exhale, Somebody moment. said yeah, everybody's trying to breathe through the mouth and nose at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine, I wish we had home video cameras there. Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, breath work in the midst of an anxiety attack, and they feel like they're suffocating. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I just kind of talked about a cool t technique so any like most most like conscious breathing is going to get you there but like if you are hyperventilating um I, I do love the bag breathing or like a modified bag breath where you just keep your regular breath rate um again just to, to clarify like when you are hyperventilating you are getting rid of more co2 which is causing more more anxiety it's going to but when you do this it will immediately feel uncomfortable when you start to breathe into a bag um, but once you feel that comfort, that discomfort kind of build to a point where you can't tolerate anymore, bring the bag down, breathe normal. And now you got this fresh oxygen rich breath going in, in with all the CO2 and it's going to absorb it. It'll kind of downregulate you chemically. Uh, and you know, cause you're, when you breathe like that, you are totally dysregulated chemically. So you're in a, and when you breathe, when you do do some of that bag breathing, that brings you back down to normal. So I, I love that personally. So someone said it's hard to diaphragmatic uh, natural do diaphragmatic naturally for me. It's like a fashion maneuver on its own, but I can do 14 second breath without focusing on di on diaphragmatic breathing. How can I improve? So, what are some of the ways that they can improve their diaphragmatic breathing? So, <clears throat> learning learning um, getting some kind of biofeedback stuff. So, like alligator breath, which we've done before, where we're kind of lying on our side. We actually did a fashion maneuver in it. Um, yeah. where you're breathing into the earth. So you're actually, you're getting feedback like, ah, oh, that's where I'm supposed to be breathing. Um, and you can just look up alligator breath. It's a super common uh, breath practice and and practice that. That's going to help you kind of cue, cue where you're at. And then, yeah, all the fashion maneuver stuff where that kind of addresses yeah, that are, you did, are uh, you did a great too. one underneath the rib. Yep. I mean, we can do that right now. Yeah. I wouldn't mind doing it. Yeah. Oh, so that, you should, I'll take my left hand, put it on my xiphoid. Take my right hand, pull great underneath the rib cage, pulling down and away, and then I move and I breathe and push my chest out. Actually, I probably need to do this anyways because my rib cage is shifting from the weekend. I had a I had a shift finally in my rib cage. Doing the other side, I got my right hand up on my xiphoid, left hand underneath the rib cage, pulling down, pulling out. Breathe. Oh man, I felt that right around in my back. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and that that one is a is a really good one. You know what would be really good is to um, is to do the um, is to do a, a video um, on all the ways to open up the, the, the diaphragm. And here are the yeah. you know here are the four ways or five ways. Because the other one yeah. is 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 uh, is is pulling the pulling the skin forward like this and then squatting and moving and breathing mm -hmm. another one is laying on a pillow and and breathing out so pushing out the back of the diaphragm yep, yep. there's <clears throat> a lot of a lot of different techniques as far as release and also like just just um just like getting some feeling to understand it because it's like 
it's like a muscle like if i were to be like all right move your rhomboid right now you'd be like i don't have any kind of relationship to that yet so yeah you're building a kind of relationship so you can start to feel a little bit deeper but also thinking when you breathe expansive don't think of breathing into your belly think of breathing wide don't think of belly because then you might just be using your abs to push your belly out think of breathing into your lower back i like that that cue as well Okay, it said, uh, Scott said, interesting in, uh, is the sinus airspace is about equal to the space in our mouth. Lots going on up there. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's where we filter. We, we air, it's our air conditioner. So it's like when we, if you were in a sauna and like a really hot sauna and you breathe in through your mouth, it's like that air, it's just going straight to the lungs where it can hurt you or cold air. But when you breathe through your nose, it has time to, to filter and, and bring it back down to body temperature before it gets to your lungs. Okay. I think. I get what the uh, vibration question was earlier is my entire body went into a full body vibration that's actually uh, a fascial response I say because it's getting more oxygen that likes it and it's trying to vibration is the way that the fascial layers break up I see that as the body trying to get more more, more space you vibration is super common in those kind of breaths too yeah we, we that's a super <clears throat> common feel hey um how about uh, nose breathing for children when they sleep? Nose breathing for children when they sleep. So it's hard to control, obviously, a, a sleeping child's uh, breathing posture. <clears throat> That's why you have to do it during the day. Um, you can talk to like a myo, uh, myofunctional therapist if you like wanted to go into that a little bit more. But um, the practices that we did last week on the last call, um, or I just posted them, are really helpful if you can get your kid to start practicing them. And it's it's pretty basic and funny and fun. That it's like a kid could like doing it, like doing these things, like. You know, when we're doing those, they're burning our, our neck and face. So right. all those exercises are really good for that. Right. Uh, second here is <clears throat> I've been uh, tritating down. So, yeah, somebody who is uh, tri uh, titrating off medication <clears throat> for CP COPD, except for like that, um, there's, you know, like, how would you recommend, because we want to keep, the serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, up, the stress down. So how many times a day will, should they be doing some sort of breath practice like this? Uh, um, I, I, always, I always recommend just once a day as a minimum, but if it's possible, I love, I love three times a day. I mean, I just love like a morning start, and this is 10 minutes, you know, it's, it's 10 minutes more practical stuff. Like I like to do my CO2 exposure work in the mornings, in the evening it's more of a down regulation, uh, but they're all kind of giving you, they're all, built-in like breath retraining practices because at a basis most people breathe uh wrong and or we were we're at least out of function a little bit and this is from a, a personal experience this is my own experience with the, with uh, with the breath as i've as i've gone through teaching it and doing it myself that you, i've i needed a lot of retraining mouth breathing and and uh over breathing and all that kind of stuff so i did too yeah yeah it's it's super common um and it's just you know it's just something we, when you learn to start changing it your world changes the way you the way you deal with everything outside when you can tap into your breath or just have a natural pattern it it'll change how you respond to everything and here's your uh here's your gemini friend uh it says oh it didn't breathe deep enough and fell backwards and my whole body jerked trying to get oxygen in that explains it was jerking it wasn't a seizure no, <laughs> yes it was just jerking oh. it's just she's she's probably hardcore she's like She's like a hardcore Gemini. She's like, just give it to me. Yeah. Let me do it. Yeah, yeah. Probably went, probably went a little heavy on it. That's all right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> all you Gemini's out yep. there. Wow. Okay, so, uh, so Ryan, this is awesome. Thank you yep. so much. I love this. Today was a really great conversation. Mm -hmm. We had the mm -hmm. ability to get some really good questions answered. Yeah. You know, I, and I really think that is. It's, there is no right or wrong answer. We're learning stuff every single day. Yeah. And, and just because somebody put it in a book somewhere or put it up there, I mean, like the whole Chris Patego thing, you know, like that shocked us. I mean, but it was because we were using his formula against another formula that was biologically mapped in the body. We found an error. And, and so there's, there's never, ever, it's never ever settled science. Anytime somebody says it's settled science, that's when I dig in because that's actually where the, the, the nuggets are. So thank you for continuing this practice. I love what you do because you're all you have a very systematic uh, approach to this and you connect it with mindfulness and the way that you live mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to your four-part uh breathing series that'll be coming up that people can take yeah. it's breathing mindset um it's how to apply it into your life right yep correct yep 
So yeah, that should be coming up soon. We'll, we'll, so it'll be, it'll be, yeah, but, but hour and a half, we'll be going through all different styles of breath and we're doing mindset stuff with my partner, Steve, um, who's the guru there. And we build it into an awesome yeah. program. It's four parts. They all blend together, but you can do one at a time as well. It's up to you. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to get Steve on the uh, live here too. For sure. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that okay. maybe next week. Thank cool. you. Ryan, it's been so awesome today. I really needed that today. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. man, it's good seeing you. Okay, take Thank you. Care. Okay, everybody. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. And um, again, go to, uh, if you want 40 Days of Truth and Purpose, super powerful, go to the link in our, or go to our website, go to our, our products, our partners, go to Serious Joy, sign up in the app. Inside the app, uh, inside the Serious Joy app, you'll find the 40 days. It's, it's included. You can try it for $3.99. You'll get the cipher. You can download the first day and you can apply that to every aspect of what you do. If you're a therapist, you can apply that cipher to, to your therapy sessions with people. It's super powerful. Thank you all. We'll see you guys tomorrow.